so welcome my dear friends so far since morning we have been seeing what to do how to do what has worked for us how we made it happen now on this evening i wanted to say if you do this definitely there is a high probability that you may end up with failure so these are all my experiential insights it doesn't reflect any organization however over my 18 years of experience whatever practical insights i got i wanted to bring in front of you that if you these if you do these if you do these things or if you identify these patterns it's high probable that you are on a wrong track so again it is an experience report so these are based upon my observations so on your context some of them can be valid some of them cannot be valid okay with this welcome to this uh, session what are the session objectives first is what are the most probable errors that can derail your agile planning outcome again agile planning happens at six different levels and if you do mess up with one plan one planning event it can have a cascading impact on other planning events so in this session what are the most probable errors that can derail your agile planning now how does it matters to you it matters to you because it helps you to detect the risks when you are actually doing the planning you basically know oh god these what these are the patterns we have observed this we have listened so probably this can be a potential risk so what will happen if you identify a risk you along with your team can actually come up with a mitigation plan okay this did not work this can be a potential risk so what can be the mitigation plan so you can get alerted okay then some of the tips from from my experience how we can address them all right now what is 6 by 2 all about don't you think the title is little bit inquisitive to you what is 6 by 2 all about 6 by 2 is all about two errors across six agile planning events make 6 by 2 6 by 2 now you can ask me why two because only 20 minute session is time is given to me <laughs> so that's why i wanted to identify what are those two top most probable errors that can derail our six agile planning events that is the topic now as you know the agile planning can happen across six events strategy portfolio product release iteration and day my dear friends whether you are in a product company or you are in a service company whatever the organization says whatever this be the strategy planning on the ground don't you think the reality is why agile why are they adopting it till what time it will continue why when how who don't you think this is the ground level information we are missing you go and ask the team on the ground what is why your organization has taken up agile ask 10 people if you ask you if you, you if you get response from one person believe me you are on a mature track what means this means the the percolation of the thought the percolation of the ju justification is not is not actually happening most of the organizations that i associate at the strategic level they take a decision that agile is the next big thing but then why who all you on wall among the and among the ground tomorrow to to move to agile you require bottom up support but to take the decision don't you think that you need to involve bottom up so that's where my dear friends there is a possibility that you know a disconnect is happening and that growing disconnect can actually lead to a potential risk tomorrow okay so let's go one by two means i am now talking about the first planning first planning event which is strategic planning event here the two probable errors in my opinion are business goals and road maps are not available even if they are available they are not current second vision statements not available 
let me reflect on my on these two statements my dear friends a service based company has set up a big agile center of excellence wing now why did they put so much money into it why did they set up what is that they want to achieve go and ask the people who is actually implementing no clue do you agree with me we wanted to go to agile do not take credit just because you want to be agile agile is a mature journey but reaching business goals effectively and efficiently is what is the ultimate means my dear friends so what are your business goals what is the vision with which you have set up an agile center of excellence for such a big service oriented organization now let me take another product organization some product organizations want to go in a partial way this part is agile this part is not agile why who has given you only this part how are you considering that some people want to go in a big bang way so what is the rationale behind it if you are if if it is the employee base if it is the subject matter experts with you if they have to take you along with you don't you think you they have to be involved in such decision making my dear friends that is one risk lying inside that's why i'm saying business goals and road map is not missing and vision statement when i say business road, road map i want to adopt agile because number 1 my quality levels at this point is time is this my availability of my system to my end users is this okay the innovation thought that is happening is this the collaboration is like this okay the customer experience is this and i want to increase to that level so far i have experimented so and so techniques but it i want to experiment agile are you with me come and ask the team my dear friends you will definitely get excellent cooperation so my dear friends these are the most probable errors the moment you as an agile practitioner you are there on that particular situation ask them this is just first you need to get in if you don't act on it what is going to happen is there is a growing disconnect that is going to evolve okay some other patterns why why we adopt agile and how we want to adopt agile how long is it going to be 2 week 2 months 6 months 2 years how long everybody says we have we are blessed with management commitment to what extent what is the threshold levels so my dear friends some how to help this particular thing is first you need to identify the business goals as i said the goal should be the availability of the systems the goal should be the quality levels the goal should be the cycle time shorter cycle time the goal should be involving customer collaboration the goal should be innovation the goal should be how best you are compared compared to your competitor these are the parameters my dear friends along with these things you got to have your financial situation also what is that non investment that you are getting so if you club these parameters this is where you are actually going to see okay these are the goals this is where i am this is where i am going to be and second thing that is where you are basically saying you will get buy in now in executive strategic management layer not everybody may be convinced with agile maybe some influential people may be may be opting for agile so i as a strategic core member i am also opting but in innerly i am not convinced so friends we have to solve certain challenges you by by piloting agile methodologies then everybody in the strategic management board they will get convinced it is important that we have to get buy in from strategic management they need to be convinced with agile with agile manifesto because once you are in agile the, the 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 test is going to be severe because the once the roles are only going to be three the the kind of test the management goes through is, is is different problems so to 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 sustain those tests definitely you got to be convinced about what you are doing just because seven out of 10 board members are convinced with this doesn't mean that eight member have to say yes so what i'm suggesting is go and implement pilot agile methodology solve their challenges show them this is what is piloting talks about what if if you go in a big bang way that is why that is where we have to get buy in from strategic management 
The next point is portfolio planning. The strategic planning, we need to have business goals, and we also need to have the vision in place. Now, ideally speaking, the portfolio board should prioritize products based upon the vision and business roadmap you have set. But on the field, my dear friends, these are the things. Pro how are you? There are two products or projects you have to prioritize. Which one you are prioritizing? Go and see what is happening on the portfolio board. They don't have right data with them, first of all. And not everybody, every, every portfolio board member joins that, my dear friends. And third point is, they are taking decisions based upon feel-good factors or compliance factors or making sure that they comply with, with some parameter or showing yes. Is it not what you observe in the practically? Ultimately, and there is no share view. For example, on this particular program or a project, where are we? Ask seven different persons, seven different answers, will they will get it. Because in the name of Agile, what people are doing? We are not implementing tools to know the health also. The data is not coming out. Certain agile practitioners are also saying, you know what, as long we are, I'm self-empowering you. You just get me done. That's fine. But when you're scaling, when you're scaling, you need to know the health status for that right data is required. So these are the two parameters that, that actually, that actually uh, are the, can actually provide some wrong situation for you. Now, some pattern for this is, there is project selection criteria missing. You got to have portfolio, need to have a project selection criteria. And then transparency missing. Over, compared to project A, you are covering taking project B. Why? Because my net present value is more there. Because my return on investment is more there. Because my payback period is shorter here. Where is the confidence? Is the portfolio board is speaking like that? You as an agile coach, as an agile practitioner, need to bring that transformation, okay? So how should you say? First, you need to assess the value, okay? Based upon technique, techniques like return on investment, net present value, payback period. Second thing is you have to plan the value. First of all, what is value? You go and ask, what is the value we are generating out of this particular project? From customer point of view, the moment of thoughts, moment of actions, the team is bringing to him is what value? Now first, identify that value and then make sure, do a value steam mapping method and come back and say, these are value added steps, these are non-value added steps. So typically, identify the value and then plan that value and then deliver value. And then use techniques like, you know, cumulative flow diagram, risk burn down charts to make sure that they are available on the walls. It should not be available in the laptops of him as a scum master or, or specific, you know, manager. It should be clearly available on the boards so that people they themselves can know. So this is how you can actually mitigate these two errors. Now, my dear friends, this is the third thing called product planning. First, product roadmap is not available. Now, on the ground, you go and ask the product owner, okay, for this sprint, I am, I am you know, refining these stories. For the next sprint, what are the, where are the stories? Uh, stories are there, but it will come by the time it comes. What does it mean? Does it mean most of the times I see, I don't know, I'm not generalizing, but I'm saying the product owners, they don't have much information, but that's fine. But at least they need to have epic level information what is going to come. I'm not asking product owner to give me the, the, the uh, story wise, but some product owners, they do not have the clarity. And one more thing is product owners are not reaching to stakeholders or end users to gain the requirements. They're actually coming back and asking our own team saying what can be done, and based on that information, I have seen scenarios where people are grooming those things. I have also seen scenarios wherein product owners delegate the responsibility of defining stories to the team inside. Is it not reality on the ground? So, so one other thing is, whatever, I have seen certain teams, their average well, story points size, average story size is certain times more than five or eight. There's a potential uh, opportunity for them to spread it into fundamental size. If they don't slice it properly, what is going to happen is there, there, there used to be a, a overlapping functionality they build and redundancy they will build and tomorrow they will attract technical debt. So some patterns uh, in product planning exercise, 
You do not include all stakeholders. Product owners do not think among themselves. Risks, issues, and dependencies are not identified. Certain friends in this particular room, I do not know whether uh, somebody's friend is here or not, is asking, among the stories, among the vertical functionalities, how do you identify dependencies? My answer would be, upstream dependencies and downstream dependencies, you got to identify. While grooming a story, you have to say, for this particular story, this is my upstream dependency. This is my downstream dependency. Unless my upstream dependencies are answered, I can't take up this story. Till that point in time, it is not definition ready. Similarly, the risks, the issues that need to be tracked. Okay? So, certain times I have seen scenarios wherein, especially when teams are geographically distributed, the teams on the other side, the product owner may not be knowing exactly how to write stories. Why? Because we are actually starting agile transformation from bottom up. The agile transformation need to come up from top down also. It has to be the hand should join. Certain organizations may face challenge if they only focus on bottom up agile transformation. So how to do? Perform story mapping exercise and derive product road map available. Coach product owner on user story writing. Plan the product planning exercise and ensure they repeat periodically. Coach product owners so that they collaborate and resolve their dependencies. So these are the, some of the tips. You can probably implement your own tips. But the idea here, but the idea here is, are you able to detect the risks based on these experiential insights or not? That is the key. Next thing is release planning. After release planning is done, Okay, you all, you are going to release planning. Team comes and says, yeah, I have done this story, I have done this story, this is done, this is not done, the some amount of thing is still left. That's what they update. Friends, that is okay, but what I wanted to know is, what is the business value you delivered as a teams, a set of scum teams for this release? How much of uncertainty you have addressed? Because as I will say, High value features need to be delivered early in the cycle. The big uncertain items have to be addressed well in the beginning. Where are we? If such information is not coming on it through release planning, then you know what is the value using, what is the use of it? Similarly, release goals are set. Okay, for this release, these are set of stories I'm doing because I only have this much amount of time. So for me to do this, I have to do this for thing. That kind of trends also have seen my dear friends. It, 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 it cannot be like that. Right? And then, 520, another 10 minutes. 530, 520, 530, no? No, no, it's up to 520. 520, no, 520 and we started fire. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, the patterns is poor participation from required SMEs. High value and high risks are not taken up early cycle. Cross team dependencies are not tracked. Okay? And then help the coach, coach the product owner, and plan the release planning exercise, coach the team to consider the release definition of done. So these are some of the techniques. So next thing, my dear friends, is iteration planning. First is, I see teams are struggling in estimating the stories. I see teams often work on large story point size. The reason is they don't take definition of done into consideration. And also, base stories are not available to them. With respect to what? Can you please wait? Hello, 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 hello. Can you please wait? Huh. So, base stories are not kept uh, visible to them. See, people are, are actually doing a relative size estimation. But do they know with respect to what stories they are doing? Is it visible? It is visible. They think I am, it is. But is it visible? No. My dear friends, that is one error prone situation that can prove fatal for you for estimation. Second thing is for the story definition of done, first of all, are you considering the entire definition of done while estimating? Most of the times, your developers or development team actually relatively size the functionality required only. They do not take care of other aspects of taking till deploying in production. Okay? So, certain times when teams are not very sure about what it takes to complete the story also, 
they have opportunity of leveraging spikes and research stories, but they don't do that. So, spikes and research stories are not leveraged, okay? And cross story dependencies are not considered. So, these are the patterns if you observe on the ground, my dear friends, you basically see, you can actually predict. You as an agile practitioner can add value to, to, the, to the agile, okay? So, some of the tips is you, ha you have to guide the team in terms of considering sprint definition of done. They have to take team velocity into consideration make the base stories and definition of done, definition of ready to be visible and you have to coach them while doing the planning poker, upstream and downstream stories need to be detected. The last one is daily planning, that is your daily scrum. We see delay in reporting and resolving impediments. Scrum master I have seen, he is very strict with respect to are you coming on time, are you talking to each other, when it comes to action to others he is doing perfect. But when the impediments are raised on him, is the same aggression is shown? Certain times not. Please check. That's yes, you're right. That's why I said delay in reporting or resolving impediments. The, the team members don't show impediments because there is they don't reflect the team behavior. Or they may have a fear saying that if I report it, what will happen? So there you have to inculcate coach the whole team behavior at that point in time, yeah. So, so basically individuals reflect I or V that we have to coach and late identification of reporting impediments, impediments are resolved at lower pace. And we have to coach the team uh, so that they become self-organized and whole team thinking. So what I am suggesting here is, this is, it takes time, it takes time, it takes patience. Okay, there is off online formal coaching, there is offline informal coaching. Most of the times informal coaching plays more role. Okay, and then visual dashboards and then basically retrospectives are key vibrant factors for you where you can go and say how are we doing with respect to resolving impediment, why this impediment got reported to us late and then recognize the team behavior. Means if you function as a team and work for the team goal, recognize because what you recognize is what you get from the teams. So with that, I wanted to conclude this short talk and I wanted to recognize the contributions of my friend V. Srinivasra also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.